Hello and welcome to another episode from The Water's Edge. Today you catch up with us on an unexpected session, but hopefully one that could offer some great rewards. Now the reason why I say it's unexpected, because we're on the 2nd of January now, so well into winter, and we're on a river Yare, which for this time of year, you'd expect these fish to have gone. Normally in the winter, what the fish would do is they'd migrate into perhaps boat yards and hold up into big shoal areas. You wouldn't necessarily expect this many fish to still be here at the time. I think I've just missed a bite there. But there's been some really big reports of a lot of roach coming out. And I'm talking fairly big roach. The biggest I've heard of is actually £1.12. But to go with those is also a lot of roach and with the odd skimmer as well. So some really big fish. And hopefully today that's what we're targeting. I'm, I'm going to set my stall out to try and catch a roach of perhaps over a pound. We've been fishing for, I don't know, 20 or 30 minutes. I've had a few roach already. I reckon I've probably had one touch in 10 or 12 ounces, so it's a great start. Now the river as we're sitting at the moment, like I said, we're on the river, yeah, we're in peg 81, I think, which is in the concrete bridge area, just up. I've got the Bouchamp Arms to my, to my left, so we're fishing just upstream of that. Um, and at the moment, we've got the last bit of the ebb tide, so the tide is going from left to right. It is now slowing down, so it's then gonna come, obviously, the other way and start to flood. So hopefully we catch on both tides i'm a little bit worried because we're catching on this tide in the short time we've been here and i often find here that you only sort of catch on one or if you do you catch sort of like the end of one or the start of another one so hopefully we've got a couple of hours of good fishing ahead if all goes to plan so while i'm out of the water let's um let's talk to you a bit about the rigs and the baits we've got with us today it's a good point and then we'll get another bait out so let's start with the rod and reel I've got a competition power feeder. Now the only reason for a power feeder is this is a big fast flowing river. So you need to have that power in the butt section here to cast and also hold feeders out there as well. As there's a lot of water pushing through and you do have to compensate for that as well. We've got four power mainline, trying to keep it as thin as I can. We're not chucking too far. I'm only 29 turns on my reel handle. So I'm trying to keep that line thin. Again, it stops more water pushing on. The thinner diameter you can get, the, the lighter lead you can use to hold out there. And then that's just on a, a standard 4,000 reel. So let's get on to the business end, which is the rig. Now I've done a few videos here on the air. If you've watched our channel, you would have seen those before. So it's pretty similar to that. It's my standard feeder rig, which is where your feeder slides in between two loops. There's a loop there, and onto another loop, you've got a double rolling swivel, which stops this hook link twisting in that flow. So that keeps that nice and straight. Onto a relatively long, I don't know, two and a half, three, two and a half foot probably hook length with a size 14 hook on there. Like I said, hopefully we're catching some big roach today. So I'm hoping that we're gonna not need to scale down really fine. At the moment we're catching and getting bites pretty steady. So it is a bit windy. Apologies if you can't hear me 100%, but another little addition to that rig we've got is I've got this little stop here, which I use all the way through summer, winter as well, because what you find a lot of these roach is the bites are so aggressive, they're really quick. And sometimes you strike and you think, how is there not a fish on there? It's almost impossible. The bites are amazing, but you don't always hook them. So what you can then do, as you see, I slide that down. You can adjust the size of that loop. So you can accordingly, if you're missing them, you can shorten it, you can lengthen it, and you can just find where you're hooking them fish. So sometimes you can even lock it right up. as almost like a bolt rig and you, you tend to hook more fish. Other times you'll have to have the full length of loop and give them a bit of line to to grab it and swim off of it. So that's something you can play with and is never the same from session to session. So that is a great little addition to that rig. So that's what we're doing, that's where we are. Like I said, I'm, I'm pretty eager to get fishing because there's fish out there at the moment and I'm hoping they're gonna stay there. But we'll have a quick look at the bait. So we've, we've got the normal stuff you'd expect to take on a river, but with a few differences. Now, as, as I said, I'm chucking 29 turns, which isn't right in the middle of the river. If this was summer and I was targeting bream, skimmers and for a real big way, I'd be fishing probably middle of the river, perhaps even past halfway, three quarters of the way. That tends to be in the main flow. So you'd use like a big bream, heavy ground bait mix, loads of worm, loads of chop caster, perhaps two dendies on a hook. You'd really attack it. So we've been a little bit more, I don't know, a bit subtler today, should we say. So we've got some hemp, which is, that's the biggest difference between what you, I wouldn't use any of this if I was bream fishing. So hemp is a big, big must for roach, especially here on the air. We've got pot of casters. Again, these are really, really good. I might, I've got maggot to start with on the hook, but what I might do if we're trying to target some of the bigger fish, I might slip a caster on because they can select the bigger fish. We've got a mixture of red and fluoro maggot in there. 
I'll be switching my hook baits up all the while and we have got a small amount of worm, a lot, lot less than I would be using if I was targeting the skimmers. The only reason I put that in there again, because I want to catch, I'm really hoping I can catch one over a pan. The two baits I think that perhaps will select those is a worm head or a double cast or something like that. But at the moment, I'm just going to stay with, with fishing on maggot because we're sort of still, we're early in the session. We're trying to scope out how many fish are there. Are they big fish? Are they small fish? And then you can start selecting your hook baits accordingly to how many you're catching. So I'm going to bait this up now. I'm going to stay with one red and one flurry. That's what I've had bites on. We've had five or six fish now. We've had a couple of skimmers as well, which is, I mean, it's believe, I don't understand why they're still here. That's why it's a bit, like I said at the start, an unexpected session, but I'm not complaining. If we can get a nice net of roach out of this, I'll be well chuffed. So I'm gonna get this one out there now and hopefully we'll catch up in a bit with perhaps another roach in hand. So let's get this one back out there. We just baited it up. So nice and short, like I said, I'm just fishing this side of halfway. Where we're fishing today, we're in a real deep bit of water. So I've got quite a bit of depth just there. That's the reason I don't need to really go much further out. And that's probably why these fish, if I was gonna guess, are still here. Like I said, they shouldn't really be here, but we've not had many frosts. So that's probably one reason. It's been a really mild winter. And as well, we've got deep water, so it's going to take them longer to be affected in this area than it is most other places. So I've got my marker on the far side. I've just cast into there beyond that clip, and I'll probably be casting every uh, three or four minutes to start with. I want to keep a lot of bait going in, and then we're just going to keep a real sharp eye on that tip. You'll notice I've got my rod and my reel right across my lap, and that's the reason. If you're bream fishing, you'd be looking for like a big nod, nod, the tip come back really slack, and you'd be striking, but... When you're targeting roach, especially, like I said, they're really jaggedy and quick. So you've got to be on it, strike pretty hard. You've got a bow in your line. So what I mean is when you hit your clip, you hit your rod up and then you make that bow in your line. So you can hold bottom with an ounce and a half what we've got today. You can hold with an ounce and a half. We normally, you'd probably need a bit more than that if you're fishing further out. And the, the better you can balance that feeder, the more chance you've got of converting bites to fish on the bank. Basically, you don't want them dragging, having to pull an extra half an ounce, an ounce of lead around if they don't need to. So you balance it to the tide. If it picks up, you might have to fish a bigger feeder. If it slows down, you can drop down lead size even more. So the more balance you can get that, the better bites you're going to get. And it is just a case of sitting there, eagerly watching that tip, almost like hand on rod poised for when that tip goes, because it will be sharp and quick. And hopefully we can get that bait going in. We can get a, a steady, flurry of fish together. There we are, there's a bite. Not sure if I connected with that one, but like I said, you do miss quite a lot of bites fishing like this, and I might might have to play about with that loop size, but certainly being here ready and hand on your reel, you can get into them bites much quicker and you are converting more. So that's a missed one. Bit of a maggot chew on there, so it was a definite pickup from a fish, hopefully from a nice big roach, and we'll, we'll get out there again and catch him next chuck. I don't know what this, this weather's going to do. Like I said, the wind is being a bit of a pain at the moment, and I think I can start to feel it rain. It's not meant to rain, so hopefully I'm not going to sit here and get wet. There we are, another feeder loaded. So we're going to the far bank, a nice gentle, gentle chuck. Hit that clip, your rod up, and then slowly feather it down onto your rod rest. And as this tide slows down, I'm going to hopefully start bringing that cast not so far up to the left. So basically you're trying to judge how fast that tide is going because realistically you want that feeder to be landing right in front of you. You don't want to be fishing your feeder down there. It wouldn't matter so much now because I'm on a pleasure session, there's no one else here, but certainly if I was in a match, there'd be someone down there. And if you're casting straight in front of you and your feeder's landing halfway down to their next peg, them fish, there we are, that's better. That feels like a better fish. Them fish are gonna be slowly drifting down and the chap next door to you can suddenly nick all your fish and you go from catching really well to fish disappearing only to look around the corner there and your fish have moved down to the next peg. So try and keep your feeder landing right in front of you. 
because then you can sort of keep the fish to yourself. You don't want to be sharing them with anyone else. There was another roach. I was saying, um, saying to Chris behind the camera before we, before we started rolling when we got the first fish. These fish look brilliant to me. I love these river roach. And that is a cracker. And they just, they, they look like big roach. I know it's a, a stupid statement because they are big roach and we're fishing for big roach. But I don't know why, just when you're fishing here on the air, they're, they're dark, they're wily old looking. You can tell they're just old fish. And they just, they're brilliant. If we can get a net full of them, I will be absolutely chuffed. I mean, he's quite, quite wide across the back. I'm not gonna, not gonna weigh each fish, but like I said, I'm the average of what we've heard of people catching is probably like the smallest being three or four ounces, which isn't bad, up to to over a pound. With an average of, I don't know, this might not be too far off average. So. If we can get a few of them coming today, I'm gonna to be a happy man because it is not often you can come down and find a river especially where you can catch fish like that. But let's slip them in a net and uh, we'll get another bait out there. Well, I'm just going to get a, another cast out there. We're right now in the middle of slack water. It's not moving. And the last, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, it has definitely slowed up a bit. And it's going to take perhaps another quarter of an hour for that to, to pick up and then start being into the flood. Hopefully, they don't move off. Like I said, sometimes you, den, you tend to catch on one tide and not the other. But I like the flood better. So if we're catching on the ebb, hopefully if it starts flooding, we'll at least get a couple of good hours as that tide starts to pick up. But... What I have noticed is the bites, we're still getting the odd bite and we've had a few decent fish. What bites I am getting, I'm really struggling to hook. So what I'm gonna do is, what we touched on earlier, is I'm gonna slide that down and, and almost lock that now. I'll leave a tiny little gap, but pretty much fix that feeder now and see if that converts some more bites to fish on the bank for me. Because they are, it's crazy. The bites are rattling off and as you pick up and there's nothing there. And a lot of the time, especially at, when there's no tide, when you get a bite with loads of tide run, that hook was set home by the tide pulling the feeder as they dislodge it. But when you haven't got that, they sort of picking it up, hitting it, feeling resistance, and just letting it go, and you just can't hook them. So I'm gonna almost create like that bolt rig effect, and hopefully that might create a fish on the bank for us. So let's get it back out there. I'm not, not expecting too much, like I said, notoriously slow time, but you just gotta this is the time you've got to plug away, keep the bait going in, because hopefully they'll come back when the tide starts to be. They haven't gone anywhere, they just don't really feed particularly well at, in slack water, and it's much harder to hook them. So keep that bait going in, and then what you have got to start doing, as we also touched on earlier, obviously when the tide was running from my left to right, I was casting slightly to my left upstream. As this tide's now going to start to come from right to left, I'm going to have to slowly move that cast up to my right so my feeder is still landing in front of me. So as we said earlier, it is important. Oh, there we go. Did it create. Might be a little fish. No. Nope. But, yeah, always the way in this sort of time. It's a grin and bear it sort of time, really. you just got to wait until that tide picks up and hopefully the fishing will come with it. But I'm going to get another bait out there. There we are, another cracking bite. They're really, really quick, these bites, and you can sort of tell there, although we have had a couple of skimmers, I think this is another roach. You can tell because they're sort of really jaggedy and fast to fight. And it is, yeah, it is a roach. Another nice fish as well. The average size has been brilliant, I must say. There we are. Let's see if we can uh, hold them up for you. Just put this rod down. There we are. Check that out. You see the uh, 
flew a maggot just on there that we caught it on, but that is a cracker. Another fish on, coming towards the net now. Been a really, really enjoyable few hours fishing. I might call this the last one. It started to have a few spits of rain. It was a nice little fish. A few spits of rain, it's getting, getting towards the end, so we probably will call this last one. And what a, uh, what a cracking way to end it. Check that out for a, a year roach. That's a proper specimen roach. I hope it shows it on camera as well as they do in real life. These fish are, nature of the river is deep and fast. They're really chunky and they actually weigh an awful lot for, for the size of them. But that by anyone's stand I would say is a, is a special roach, certainly from a river. So uh, I'll quickly whip the hook out and what I'll do is I'll pop them in the net with the others. We'll perhaps have a, a little look at them, a picture, because it's for me been a really enjoyable day. Well there we have it, we've picked out two of the better fish for you. We had two fish that just tipped over a pound, these are the better two, but we've had four or five others that have been around 14-15 ounces as well, so a cracking net of fish, a brilliant day's fishing. If, uh, if we weren't just two days into the new year I'd probably say that this is one of, one of my favourite sessions of the year. It has been really enjoyable, but I obviously can't say that only two days in, but what I will say, if the fishing like this continues for me for the next year to come, I'm certainly gonna be pretty happy with that. But I'm gonna get these back with the others and we'll get them returned safely home. But I'd just like to thank you as always for watching and we'll see you again on the next one.